Hey guys, good day. In this video, we are going to integrate the live search feature in our IMS system or inventory system. Um, but before that one, let's just create a separate file. Um, let's just copy from this one. Uh, so here just add a, an input so search input inside then let's add an ID and then here let's add a placeholder so let's create a script so a javascript script to watch or once the user type inside the search input then we want to fetch the data from database and then display the result so let's create the script tag then here let's add an event listener called uh, i think change you can use change so let's just try and then inside let's grab the target element so let's try so once we change as you can see it logs the elements so let's try key app so every time we type it will uh, it will be triggered so now let's check if the target element is the search input or the search input and then let's store the value to the search term surprise um, does it work uh, should add an ID um, <coughs> so let's remove the target so as you can see the value of the input is shown in the log so next is so here we have i have this code in my previous project so i'm just going to base uh the or make this one as my as our guide so here um we'll use the clear timeout so basically it stops the set timeout function since we'll be using the set timeout method so let's just create uh, variables uh, so here let's just space them so we have the typing timer let's remove that one this and this is the delay so after one seconds will trigger the pulling of data from the database so inside the script uh let's add the so this is the sample code so clear timeout and then the typing timer so the timing timer it's this is where we use the set timeout so we'll store the set timeout and then here it's a function so the done typing interval so that's what we use for i mean the delay so let's just use five milliseconds then we'll trigger the pulling of the data <coughs> so now inside let's just try to log the search uh, term first so it doesn't work uh, let's okay so as you can see now every time we type we trigger this uh, typing or the set timeout function so now we're going to call a function called search db and we pass the search term so outside let's add the function search db and then here we'll add the arguments so it's working so here what we're going to do here is let's call the ajax method 
so this will be a get type and then the data is we're going to send the search term and then once success we'll add it inside the function and then the data type it returns would be a JSON now the URL we'll just use our database folder and the live search.php so let's add a comma so it's not defined the jQuery so let's just put here so toggle button is not defined oh, let's remove that one so as you can see it is working however we'll need to create that file inside the database so this is uh, the script that will pull the data from our MySQL database so let's try let's get the the search term so we can use the get variable then use the key the search term so let's try to dump the data and as you can see here we have successfully pull or get the search term so now we can add more validation so if is set or not we'll just use empty string then we need to lower the key so here in our database you can see we have products suppliers maybe users so we can use them uh, as the data to search on so for users we have uh, name first first name the last name so here in our supplier view we'll just grab some of our codes so uh, here we have the include first the connection that PHP file and then in our inventory we can so I'm thinking of storing them in a table so the tables that we are going to search is users the products and inside the suppliers table so we can just loop into the tables and then here we can use that query so we'll just add a weird aware um, yeah aware class however we'll need to have the column name so as you can see here in our tables we can use or turn this one into associate table range so the key will be the table name and then the value would be uh, the column, the name of the column. So for users, since we're going to return the first name last time, let's just make it empty. The product name and supplier name, let's set that one. So here we can just use the like function. So in here we are going to add the search term or insert the search term. So basically we'll check if there's this text inside the table then we're going to store them in a results variable before that we're going to fetch them the rows and store in the results variable so let's try refresh let's check so as you can see it's showing empty um, let's see so this should return a value um, this should be the search term so let's try so as you can see here we it returns a value or the result is returned now going to add the key so the users data start in one key so now here uh, for our users table we'll need to return 
first name or look for the column our uh, first name column or the last name column else it will look for the keys that we specify in our tables array so let's try um, do to let's see so as you can see we have users table and it returns that row so let's return using echo and json encode so as you can see here the users row is returned so in our success just log first the data so as you can see okay, they are showing or returning correctly so next thing we need to do here is in our search DB function let's try to check uh, maybe well for the length of our result let's just add a length variable and then here let's return an array so the length and then the data which is the results so that way we can easily see if there are returns or how many return rows or search result so here let's remove um, spaces so see we have the users one user so now if going to check so if response that land means there are data else then here we are going to loop through the objects so uh, we'll be using this for loop so here let's loop the response at data so the keys is the table and the table rows are the actual records uh, if we try no data found so here let's switch or maybe let's use just zero here so as you can see the data or the results are returned so it's working fine and what we need to do here is create an html variable and this is where we are going to store the html so for now we'll just add an href this should be a link or you can click and it will be return or uh, the apple redirected to the page depending on the return or the data types if users or a supplier or product so the text is if it's a producers then we'll get the first name and the last name so here the text else uh, if it's the suppliers table we're going to return the supplier name and lastly the product will return the product name so here we'll put them inside the text <coughs> then also we'll create a supplier you I mean the URL value so here the URL for our user is this one let's copy them and then paste so actually the users is this one and then the products is this one now we can supply that to our href attribute and then here we can log the HTML so let's try as you can see it's working fine 
now let's just add the new element to store the result so here let's get that element and then we can just set inner HTML to that one simple as that and then here we we'll use or capture the HTML so let's refresh so as you can see and if you click it will return to the user so here we can add a break so as you can see here so I think there's an issue with this one so if we have yes, Nescafe, Nestle and if we click it will redirect to the correct page so if it's a supplier it will return to the supplier view or other if you users and it will turn to the users um, main page so as you can see we have an issue um, we're going to add here uh, so inside is uh, maybe this one uh, if we need to search for the land so if we have land then that's when we trigger the alert or the pooling so let's copy that one else we'll just display our to none and then here the black value so here we have that let's remove it let's try so now it is working fine next video we're going to integrate to our IMS